I'm starting now. So hello, everyone. Yossi Kaplan here, your friendly Toronto, Costa Rica realtor. And today I'm very, very excited to um, host my new two best friends, <laughs> Patrick Jager and Adam Pura Bates. Vida. How are you, boys? Pura Vida. Good to see you. Pura Vida. Pura Vida. Okay. So today's focus is, and thank you for coming on board, is to get Canadians mostly, because I'm in Ontario and Toronto, and many of us are moving to Costa Rica either part-time or full-time. So obviously there's something we discussed uh, last time with Anna, what happens part-time, full-time financially. But today we're going to speak more on what is it like to live in Costa Rica and what you need to know and all these little things. Now, I'm, um, I, I'm very glad I found Patrick and Aaron uh, because they are relocation specialists. They are not referral. They're not real estate people like me. All they do is help you go from here to there. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. 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 All right. So we'll keep it short and bouncy. Um, today we're speaking to 50 plus Canadians, but anyone else really, but you'll put some things will pretend to Canadians, um, <clears throat> that want to move to Costa Rica. We'll explain what a relocation specialist is. We'll explain why we don't have, we do not have referral fees and so on and so forth. I'm going to go right to the meat of it. If you guys okay with it, because people short times very short. And I'm going to ask you actually about yourself at the end <laughs> and your company at the end, but okay. I'm going to start right with the topic. Right. And the first topic is various considerations for relocating, um, visa, housing, banking, insurance, food and culture, and the medical. Take it away. Yeah. Um, I, th I think there's a lot of things. That's a huge list. So we're gonna we're gonna narrow that down. Maybe you you might have to remind us where we are on the list. I'll start. So visa requirements. It, the most important thing to know on visa requirements is it is very easy from Canada to come into Costa Rica um, on a tourist visa. It's a sixty. It's a six month visa. Um, they stamp. They want to make sure that you do have a a a, um, a flight home. You can always extend that. Um, they're called, we call them border runs for people that want to just cross into another border, Nicaragua, Panama, go to Guatemala, go back to Canada for a bit. The second you come back, that clock should start over. I say it should because it really is the discretion of the guard. Uh, so that's, th that is just to say that while you're looking at where you want to live in this amazing country, it's not like you have to go in with a, with a visa in mind. As a matter of fact, Aaron and I really believe that, oh yeah, we're having a, we're having a weird thing with your, with your system. He's going to bounce out and come back too. Um, Aaron and I really believe that, um, you should not apply for a visa before you move. Um, the main reason for that is it really depends on how you're moving. If you're moving as on a renter's visa or you're moving on an investment visa, meaning you've bought a house versus you move on a pension visa, they all have different ramifications. Um, how you pay into the healthcare system, all those things change. The amount you pay, the, 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 the benefits you have change depending on which visa you want to go for. So we talk about that very specifically because it's important for us to, to remind people that find your slice of paradise first, make mm -hmm. sure you're comfortable with that, then apply for the appropriate visa. You have the time, um, you know, you can get in and out of the country. That shouldn't be the issue. A lot, there are some that will sell you on visa first, get your visa before you come down. That that's a different type of thing. That's totally fine. That's just not the way that we would tend to to think of visas. But there really are for your audience. There's really three visas to think about. First and foremost, the investor visa, which would be if you buy property, you only need to have one hundred fifty thousand dollars that you invest, and that can be in a combination of things: property, car, uh, invest in a in a business. Um, so that's the first type of visa. The second type of visa is, uh, depending on your age, the pension visa. So this is for someone that is, but, but there are a lot of requirements and I really want to make sure that you go look and we can, we'll have links to us. We can talk, if you want to talk to us, we'll have links so that you know how to get a hold of us to talk through these. Um, but the pension visa, you have to prove that you have a source of pension income moving forward. 
And then the third is a renter's visa, the rentista, which also you have to prove you have a certain amount of money in the bank every month to be able yeah. to prove that you are. And again, and the part of the reason for this is they want to make sure that you're not a drain on their system. They want to make sure that if they're bringing you in on a visa, you can take care of yourself. Right. financially, health, what have you. So those are kind of the three big, uh, big visas to think about. Aaron, anything I missed on that? Uh, my apologies, my internet is not uh, behaving today. I'm on vacation in the United States and I have better internet in Costa Rica. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, no, I think you summed it up well, Patrick. Uh, those are the visa options. There are, you know, for a vast majority of people, those are the three visa options. Great. Let's go to the second um, mini question, which is housing options. Uh, just very briefly, what are housing options are for people that come to live in Costa Rica? Mm -hmm. Either part time and we call it snowbirds, I, people that come yeah. for six months or less because we retain our rights, our health rights and all that in Canada um, or right. full time. What are the housing options? Yeah. You know, Costa Rica is really a developed country and has all of the housing options that you would find in other countries such as Canada. You you can buy a lot, you can buy a house, you can buy a condo, you can rent a condo, you can rent a house. Uh, so really you've got a lot of options available to you just as you would in Canada. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest thing to think about too, there's a couple of things to think about. One, the housing in Costa Rica is built to last. Um, the you know because of where we are in the world, there are storms and there are earthquakes. So the houses are solid as rock. They're not going anywhere. They're very well built. Um, there's we we typically look at housing in with two mindsets, and this this is not in any way to sound derogatory, but it's really about expectation. One is Tico housing, and two is Western style. Right. The difference of that is a. A Western style house, those of us that come from north and farther up in North America, we tend to want the creature comforts. We want our AC, we want our dishwasher, we want, you know, top of the line range, we want blah, blah, blah. Costa Ricans don't feel the need for all that. It, it feels excessive to a lot of people. You know, a washer and dryer. They might have a washer, but they definitely don't. Most don't have dryers right. because you air dry. So part of looking at housing is thinking about what is your what is your um, what is your ability to forego some of your creature comforts, right. um, or do you really need your creature comforts? And then then that's where a nice new home that's considered with a very Western mindset is going to come in. And I think that that's a really important thing because. Um, you know, let's be honest, Costa Rica is not the cheapest country in Central America. There's a lot of reasons why the three of us on this call have called Costa Rica home. It's mm -hmm. the country that we love. It's the country that has the most stable government. It has, you know, quality of life. It has happiness index. It has all these things. Um, but it really thinking through, we, we go with our clients. We make sure our clients really think through the, where am I, like, what, where am I on, on the scale of what do I feel I need so that we can find the right housing in the right community? We also, we also do a 124 point survey when we start with someone, because a lot of times you see dichotomies. I really want to live by the beach, but I don't like bugs, or I really want to live in the mountains, but I, I, I don't like rain. Well, a, if you don't like rain, Costa Rica might not be a country for you because it rains a lot. Um, so, so I think with housing, the reality is there's housing for everyone. I, I over went my welcome with that one. Sorry. Moving on. Thank you. And, 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 uh, I will mention, I do come from the Western style, which I like my things. They're not comforts. I need them. Um, and that's why I joined the Playa Lagarto, um, because you can build your own home or you can buy one of the pre-made villas. It's in the background behind me and those will have everything you expect. It's mm -hmm. just the same kitchen I have behind me here. It's what you'll find there. All right. Yeah. Um, banking. A lot of people ask me, can I have a bank account? How do I get a bank account? Can I have Visa in Costa Rica? How do I transfer money there? Like, uh, Don't give me the whole, like, you know, uh, ISO <laughs> answer, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you the quick answer. Yeah. Yeah. Banking is, you know, world-class, um, very similar to Canada or the United States. 
Um, you can open on a tourist visa. It's a little bit of a, uh, there's some, ju- some hoops to jump through uh-huh. um, on a, a tourist visa or on other visas. You can open a bank account in U.S. dollars and in Costa Rica colones. Um, and then you can easily wire transfer money down just like you would to any other bank account. Um, pretty, pretty simple, straightforward. Keep your bank account maybe in Canada. Uh, there's, you know, some nuance to the strategy, but it's uh, pretty straightforward. Do you have to physically be present in Costa Rica to open a bank account or can someone open it on my behalf? Or maybe I can go to a Toronto branch and do it here. If you know. You, um, go ahead, Patrick. No, go. You, 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 you're, you're our bank expert. <laughs> Banking is one of the most uh, frustrating um, parts of setting up your life in Costa Rica. It's not long term. Once the, the accounts are set up, it's pretty straightforward. But it does take some hoops to jump through. Um, you, you have to be present. You have to walk into a branch. That branch manager might say, great, uh, here's, a, here's a new account. Um, if, if they say no, then you might have to go to a different branch. We've uh, done this with clients before. Um, sometimes the, the branch doesn't know, quite know the, the national rules around opening an account for foreigners. But, um, you know, set aside a day, six hours or so to, to navigate the mess. And then once it's all set up, it's easy. And this is something we help clients go through. In terms of opening an account in Canada um, that you can use in Costa Rica, I, I'm not aware of that that's a possibility. I know Scotiabank is, is Canadian, right? Yep. It is. And there are branches, there are branches in Costa Rica. So I that might be a possibility. I think one of the things to think about, and I think it's important for people to understand is that Costa Rica is a neutral country. It's, it's, it's the Switzerland of, of Central America, which is one of the reasons people love coming here because it really has this sense of, I, I'm at peace here. Um, if you think about who's to our north and to our south, um, part of the reason for this is the government really wants to be very discerning on and, and scrupulous to look at who you are. If you're bringing money into the country, let's just be honest, they don't want money laundering. They want to make sure that you are who you are. Um, they want to keep the country safe. They want to keep the country um, respectful. So they, they do... Um, a lot of what they do, it seems weird for us. It seems like a lot of hoops to jump, but they're doing it to protect everyone. And they really are. They, I, I personally take a lot of um, pride in the fact that they go that extra mile. Thank you. Um, really, in 60 seconds about insurance, people asking me about um, life insurance, if it ain't in Costa Rica, and of course, health insurance, most important. Insurance is insurance is something that is very easy to get. Uh, c- car, you know, your home, your car. We tend to in the West overinsure compared to Costa Ricans, but we would always highly encourage that. Um, health insurance. There are brokers that can look at private health insurance in Costa Rica. Um, if you are on, if you have your residency, you can also you will also be part of the Caja for public health insurance. Mm-hmm. Um, and then life insurance, I am not familiar with life insurance, um, but it's important to get that. One thing I would say um, with insurance, make sure you have a, you need to have a will in Costa Rica for the house that you buy so that that house is transferable between people uh, in your family, but that also will help with your insurance. That's a great point, Patrick. Uh, Anna that I interviewed uh, last week also mentioned that it's not enough to have your will in Canada, you must have one in Costa Rica, otherwise, uh, you could be in trouble. Right. Right. I mean, you're not in trouble because you're not there anymore, but <laughs> everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Your family might be. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, food and culture. I, I know it's a huge topic, but just a few words about food, well, what to expect, and uh, can I get my steak and potatoes on the Sure. Side of the <laughs> Absolutely. I think the thing to know, though, is that Costa Rica is the one country that Spain, once it conquered, kind of left alone. So if you're looking for the rich culinary experience of a lot of Central American Spanish influenced countries, you're not going to get that. It is a very beans, rice, chicken, steak. It's a very simple, very basic, but it's a very healthy diet. Um, the cows are different. They're, they're, um, the cows are, are not the same as we have in further North America. So the beef tastes a little different, 
but it is a very spectacular cuisine. It's very healthy, but you also get, you know, Peruvian food and like you can get anything you want. Argentinian steaks that are important. Lots of pizza. Lots of pizza. <laughs> Lots of pizza. Yeah, and I will say well, I, I lived in Nicaragua for a bit and I visited Costa Rica a bunch of times and um, the food tastes real good. Everything because it, it's grown mm -hmm. in the sun. Here in Canada, you know, every uh, avocado is shipped from Mexico and they, obviously it, it, it doesn't ripe properly. That's right. So. Right. So Ours are off our trees. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, what about the local culture? Like, can it be, can someone feel uh, comfortable? Absolutely. Uh, everyone is so incredibly welcoming and warm uh, to, to foreigners. Um, you know, the, the people are just fantastic. I've met so many friends and I think you'll fit right in, especially if you take the effort to learn how to speak Spanish. That's the key. You don't have to be fluent in Spanish, but you have right. to prove we're, we're coming to their country. I think that whole idea of the ugly American really is the ugly foreigner. And it's the foreigner that expects people to talk to them in English and have their idioms and understand what they're saying. You're in their country and a little graciousness as it relates to that goes a very, very long way. But there's a reason Pura Vida means what it means. I mean, it's, there's a graciousness to that. Um, so if you, if you put in a little effort, you get a massive return. Uh, similar with us, you know, like we have a, a large uh, French, a uh, Francophone uh, population. And uh, je m'appelle Yossi, that's a bit, bit, pretty much enough. <laughs> and then you can go to English. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, what I got? Uh, oh, medical, dentist, eye care, um, meds, drugs. How does that work? Doctor visits, hospital. Aaron, do you want to take it or you want me to take it? Go for it, Patrick. Um, so I think, I think the big thing is it is world-class medical. Like some of the best, I, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of medical tourism to Costa Rica for a reason. There's world-class medical. If you are, the, the, the Caja system is very much like the, the Canadian system in that it's, it's socialized. So you can get everything, but you might wait. There are a lot of people that do kind of a bifurcated thing. So if it's something they need to do and they can wait, they go through the Caja. If they didn't do it immediately, they go through private pay. Private pay in Costa Rica is vastly less expensive than it is in Canada or the United States. Um, uh, it's If you keep an insurance plan also in Canada because you get it through your um, through your work, for example, you might want to look at seeing what, they're, what they uh, what their reimbursement is for international. Um, some have very strong reimbursement. That way you can feel very comfortable going to private. Some things like dentists. I know a lot of people that do private, just do private dentists because it's cheap enough that they'd rather just not have to go through the Caja for that. But uh -huh. there really is something for everybody in terms of levels of, of care, um, uh, levels of, of, uh, you know, PPO versus an HMO model. Um, but the, the healthcare itself is, 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 quite excellent thank you okay um <clears throat> uh, my next topic i said um i'm gonna skip to uh, the questions about you guys and your enterprise i'm gonna keep to the very end um overcoming for fear of relocation so you know people yeah. that are the 60s even even older we're used to certain things we used to go to the corner and get the milk at 8 p.m or whatever it is um there's some psychological issues that i have to let go of and actually we live in a, in, a, in times of ascending and kind of letting go of a lot of stuff and embracing new so maybe that's a great uh, connection here but you know the 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 mental emotional um aspect of of moving part-time or full-time to another country Go for it, Aaron. Yeah, yeah, that, that, this is a big uh, topic that I think not enough people think through before they make the move. Um, you know, it, it is, um, it's something, it's a mindset change. This is a new life, you're starting a new chapter uh, and you have to be adaptable and flexible to new adventures. Um, otherwise, Costa Rica might not be the right place for you long-term. 
Um, I still have days where I scratch my head and think, what the heck am I doing here? This is insane. Um, uh, but, but the, all of the beauty and the goodness that I've, that I've received in being in Costa Rica has far outweighed those moments of fear and, um, you know, anxiety. Um, once you're in the country for, you know, six months, things tend to get better. They, they, those, that fear tends to go away for most people that we work with. Um, but part of our job, Patrick and I, uh, we, we're, we say we're part-time uh, therapists as well, because we're, we're helping clients think through, you know, what are they af- afraid of and how do we mitigate those fears? But I think on top of that, I think that a, a key thing here is when you move anywhere, for anyone that moves, I mean, even if you're moving from a very, two very drastically different parts of Canada, right? You're going to move to like Newfoundland somewhere that's very different than where you were in Vancouver. There's a cultural shock because things just aren't done the same way. I think the biggest piece of advice we have is don't expect them to bend to you. Learn to adapt to them. This country has been here for a very, very long time. Yeah. And it does not need another foreigner to come in and say, let me tell you how we can do it better. <laughs> they don't listen to that, nor should they. We have to learn to adapt and we're moving down there on purpose. We want to have a more relaxed way of life. We want to not be quite so, you know, needing it right now. Amazon, uh, you know, Amazon focused. When yeah. you get past that and you learn to just lean into this idea of Pura Vida, which isn't just pure life. It just means I'm okay with what it is right now, right? right? If your Pura Vida is, oh shoot, my power went out. Well, okay, yeah. And it will come back and you have a couple hours in, with candlelight and and be romantic, even if it's just with your dog. <laughs> but like, that's Pura Vida. Like, you, that, like we, we do a lot of this. I mean, we, one of the reasons we have a lot of our clients come down for scout trips first, and we always say, stay in an Airbnb because that forces you to go and go to the grocery store and adapt and, and, and try things. You have to, as Aaron said, you have to give it time. Yeah, very good. Okay, good. So my second last question, the last question is, is all about you guys. Uh, the second last question, which which ties to, to the integrating into is the community and socializing. So for example, in Playa Lagarto, it there is a thriving community, mostly Canadians. There's a chat group and there's a Facebook group. And you know, people are helping and complaining and like living life, uh, you know, and like people come and go and whatever it is. Um, what would you say uh, to expect and how to integrate if I'm going to move down for maybe it's a gated community or, or a small town or whatever. In my case, it's a gated community, but it could be anywhere. Um, maybe a couple of tips on integrating and finding new friendships and commune, communalizing and, and socializing. Aaron, I feel like you, oh, Aaron, drop. Okay, I'll take this. Um, I think this is such an important thing, trying to find your tribe. Mm -hmm. WhatsApp, WhatsApp, Facebook groups, both hugely good. I mean, hugely good. Wow, bad grammar. But um, both are really important. But also start, and this would be true no matter where you move, start thinking about what are the things that are important to you. Um, a lot of life centers around restaurants, cafes. So, you know, what's the cafe you're going to go hang out at on a Tuesday and just to spend your time? What is the, you know, like, where do you want to volunteer? We do a lot of this with our clients is like, what are the things that are important to you? If yoga is your thing, you're going to find your tribe in yoga. If, if um, we have a client right now that has two boys, one needed baseball, the other theater. So finding a place where they felt comfortable, where they could thrive, their sons found the right schools, and we have an education specialist that does that, and then found the niches that help them. Because once they those kids had what they wanted, the parents of those kids are going to be their new tribe. So finding your tribe is, is critical. One thing we would say, Facebook groups, WhatsApp chats, a lot of people on WhatsApp, my community, I live in a gated community in Costa Rica as well. And the WhatsApp group tends to get very, you know, whatever. Certain people always want to talk. 
take those things with a grain of salt. Take yes. WhatsApp groups and Facebook groups. You can find great family and connection on Facebook groups, but there's just also a lot of crap that yep. people say in any kind of online forum. So you can definitely use a Facebook group to find your tribe, but then know how to be selective about that. Don't let, don't let a Facebook group determine whether or not you're enjoying the country because you're going to get a lot of people. It's just like anything. The people that are on any kind of chat group are other people that are super positive or super negative and everybody in the middle goes, wow. Yeah. So <laughs> find your tribe and then know how to tune some of that stuff out. Very good. Aaron? Yeah, sorry. My internet is just really not cooperating today. You, um, but I think, you know, I, I'll echo what Patrick said. Um, finding local friends and foreign friends is really the key to uh, your long-term survival in Costa Rica and enjoyment of Costa Rica. Don't just stay in your, your expat bubbles. Um, really branch out. Get to know um, Ticos and they're they want to get to know you and they want to practice their english and you would will want to practice your spanish i think it's really um a beautiful thing when you can come together and build a community of both ticos and foreigners um and i've it's taken me a while it's taken me two years to kind of um, um to really um settle in and make some really good friends but once you do life is good very good Thank you, boys. Um, here we are looking at your website. So the yeah. website is yourpuravida.com. Uh, yourpuravida.com. You'll see that we do, we have really three services, scouting, relocation, and schools. Our scouting service is exactly that. We help you think through where, what is the right place in Costa Rica? Is it Tamarindo? Uh, and if so, you know, we'd love you to go meet with Yossi. If it is, if what you really want is the mountains, we'll help you figure out that. We start with a, a, a free 20 minute assessment. Um, we then give you a survey to fill out that helps us figure it out. Then you get a free report that says, this is where we think you, you would fit in. Uh, the best in terms of provinces, but then we help you with your scouting itinerary, everything from helping find the Airbnbs to everything you want to know about towns. The one thing to know about us is we don't do for you. We are not a concierge service. We believe very fully that the people that survive and thrive in Costa Rica are the people that learn to do for themselves. So be it scouting or relocation or schools, we'll do all the identification for you of what you need, how you need it, are the options, but you have to actually pull the trigger and do it. Um, you know, the old adage, don't give a man a fish, teach a man to fish. We want to teach you to thrive. Right. Um, so, and, and if you have schooling- Everything starts with a call, yeah? Everything starts with a call, 20 minute free call. Um, we are also developing a fourth product, which is just for retirees. Um, because our relocation services are both for retirement and non-retirement. So right. there are uniquely different things if you're a retiree than a non-retiree. So we're actually splitting that service up into two. Um, we have a, a incredible school counselor that will help find the right schools for your kids. Um, and yeah, we love what we do. We're very passionate. We don't want just people to move because they want to move. We want people to, that, to move that can thrive and become part of the fabric of Costa Rica. So that's our staff. Aaron, myself, Andrea, who's our education specialist, and Benjamin, who's our client specialist. Benjamin uh, just posted he's in Vegas today. Uh, he's never been to the States before, and what a crazy place to start. Um, <laughs> and uh, so um, we're a t mighty team, two Ticos, two um, North Americans, and uh, yeah, we'd, we'd love to work with, with you. And, and we, we love hearing from people. Yeah. Hola at yourporavita.com h-o-l-a at yourporavita.com shoot us an email we love to hear from people uh we respond to everyone um even if you have just a quick question about costa rica we would love to answer it via email yeah very good how did you guys get to um like from whatever you were doing before to this um, well, Aaron and I have known each other for a really long time. We actually met um, at church in in the states, and um, we've, and Aaron moved down first. I moved down about a year afterwards. Different parts of the country. Um, really, we we did this because we had so many problems that we experienced in our own moves. 
that we said, gosh, wouldn't it be good to be able to help others? I mean, that's my t- recollection of it, Aaron. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was, we made so many mistakes. Um, and, and the thought was, what if we could share that with others and help others along the journey so that they don't make as many mistakes and they're able to really integrate into Costa Rica better? Very good. Very good. Um, any, any, um, okay, we'll, we'll wrap it here. There's a lot more. Everyone knows how to contact you guys. And thank you for offering to answer questions just by email. I really appreciate that. Oh, it's our pleasure. Um, okay. Uh, maybe a word to close. I, I, my word to close is um, come explore. Learn what you love, learn what you don't, but know that you're in really good hands. You know, Yossi's community is stunning. And if you end up on in that part, it's a wonderful part of the country. The country has a lot to offer. Um, you know, come find your your piece and, and be excited about it. Thank yeah, you. and I would say... I would say, um, you know, Pura Vida awaits. It's a, it's not mm. only a physical move, but it's also a mindset and a heart move. And so, be open to to what life may bring in Costa Rica, and um, you'll be far better off for it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Aaron and Patrick. <laughs> that Mucho was, gusto. Mucho gusto. Gracias. Mucho gusto. That was absolutely uh, amazing. And I thank you very much. And uh, I'm sure we'll see each other soon. It's our pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Pura Vida. Pura Vida. Ciao.